Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Nuff Said Podcast. We're talking Season 2, Episode 12 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., who you really are. Did you like the read on that? Oh, that's nice. Oh, something different. I am one of your hosts. I am Ridiculous Rob Southgate. With me is... Jaundiced Jack Wengroski. And? And as Guardian Alil. Oh, but you spell it with two S's. All right. Of course I do. Is that as Guardian with a Z? <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm hip hop. Yeah, good one, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. Once in every so, ten tries, I get a good one. <laughs> really, it's it's that few. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to talk about this episode. There was so much that happened in this one. I know we usually end up going way off topic and like flying all over the place, but this one, I th- I think there's a lot to talk about. Um, actually, before we do that, did you see the Daredevil trailer today? Actually, I did. I thought oh. I thought you would be actually proud of me for that. Oh my gosh! Did it did it do to you what it did to me? I was a puddle afterwards. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm not going yeah. to admit to that in open in open radio. Thank you. <laughs> and I go to bed with it. Hey, everybody! Here's a Twitter picture of Jack <laughs> in, oh. in a puddle. Yeah, in a little. In his room. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, did you guys dig it? I dug it. Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm excited for it. I, I tell you what, watching it, I just, as I'm watching it, as it's going, I, what was it, five minutes? I, I started getting that twinge, like, oh, I got to binge watch this, like, right now. <laughs> like, I don't care if it's eight hours. I need to start right now. Now, is that like the Bosch, po- the, uh, the Bosch series where they're putting out all at the same time? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. It, and it's not eight hours, it's 13 hours. Rob. What's 13? Even better! Oh, See, now Melissa's, like, wait. watched all of them, but I'm doing one at a time, which, you know, like, I'm, like, guessing, and she already knows, but we're doing one week at a time. So that's wow. going to that's gonna be tough. Either I'm going to have to watch them all, or... Well, we're not going to do one week at a time, that's oh. for sure. So I can, I can knock them out and not have to worry about spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're going to have to figure this one out. We'll do this off air, but... We'll make an official announcement of how we're going to handle it, uh, because I I'm not sure how the three of us are going to handle watching this, but yeah, after there's here, no way I'm going week to week to week. Right no here. freaking <laughs> way. Yeah, and after what happened with you in the puddle, I don't want to know. <laughs> right. Hey yo, I I'll chafe if I'm moist that long. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so back to the show. Yeah, this oh is what happens when God. you record this late. A little, I blame you. Uh, I'm today. sorry. I've been. I'm in Colorado. It's Mountain Standard Time. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. You're in Colorado too. Yes, I'm. I'm at Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> hey, oh. Well, uh, on that note, good night, everyone. <laughs> I, <just, laughs> I silenced the crowd. Yeah. Go. It's a little's annual trip there. He <laughs> says he's there to fish. I don't know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So uh, there was. I can't quit else. you. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask you guys before we got into it. And I can't remember what it was, but I'm sure it'll come to me. Uh, th- that Marvel thing was just killing, or that Daredevil thing was just killing me today. Yeah, it was good. I liked when obviously you know he must have fallen or got knocked over on the ground, and he's like in the water, and he's picking himself off up the off the ground, and the the the, the trickle of blood coming from his lips. Oh, it was intense. And the whole thing is just absolutely awesome. I cannot wait. And it makes me want to see all of them. I mean, you saw how this was, you know, like when they get to Iron Fist and they get to, you know, 
Luke Cage. I mean, what are they going to do with these? Are they going to all be this tone? It's awesome. They got to be. Oh, I can't wait. I can hardly stand it. We can tell. Don't yeah. stand that up either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I won't. I promise. Too moist. Uh, okay. I want to get into this thing. So, and if we think of what the other thing is, we will absolutely go back to it because that's how we roll. Uh, so, what did you guys think of this episode? A little? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I j- literally just finished watching it, and you're you're right. There was so much that happened here, and you know, we we got our our first Cree, yeah, um, to the show, a live Cree. A, a live pre uh, and in human form, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, I thought they were supposed to be bigger. Well, I think that's part of the disguise and the fact that yeah, he you know he's like, why am I not blue? But yeah, I think I think we're supposed yeah, to he, believe that there's more. Change. His he, size didn't change when he converted. Well, I mean, he was still in the in the tube. They look fairly human sized, but yeah, I think that we have to believe that there's been. I mean, to me, I have to believe that there's been like significant uh, alterations to make him look more human. So, sure. And, 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 you know, I could only, you know, I think we could only guess about that. But I did like the fact that when he runs out of helium or nitrogen or, or you know, whatever gas that he's supposed to be using, that he, he starts to turn blue again. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed that, that he had- that he wasn't just here breathing our air and, and just, you know, going around. There was like a, a whole story to that. Yeah. And, and, looked- uh, and, and that he wasn't technically the villain here. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I thought, okay, that was actually one of the things I really found interesting. Like as we were watching this, I, I really felt like the show was really clicking in. I thought that they, they created a lot of turmoil with the, the main group. I thought that the antagonist, protagonist, the whole concept was really thrown on his ear. And and with with the Kree, you know, it set it up at the beginning. He's the bad guy. Obviously, Sif is not going to be the bad guy. But ultimately, was he? I, I really didn't think so. I thought they did a really nice job of, of, you know, letting the character be what the character is by nature without making him a villain, per se. And And I thought that they really played Sif well. But they, they always do. I mean, this is the point last season where when they got to the Sif episode where we were just like, oh, my gosh, Sif is just amazing. And this is great. Here we are again. Right. And I think it kind of puts off the, you know, the the alien war state that would have obviously have happened. But I think it's only putting it off. I think it's it's going to this is really setting up you know a righteous war because the Kree are going to feel like. They have to kind of either protect everybody or figure out that there's weapons. Obviously, the diviners, they're supposed to be, what, was it six or eight in that crate? And I think it was six. Six, and they're all gone. But we know we know some of the other Inhumans still have theirs. We only know one that's destroyed because they kept saying, oh, well, we flooded the city, so we know right. all the diviners are down there, but they're not. Yeah, no, we don't no, know I, that. I think I think I don't think he said all the diviners. I think he thinks that the city is the only place for uh, the Terrigen Mist to to un- be unlocked. You know, because he's got to take well, it to the city. No, a little, I so think, I think he, he did thinks... say that. I think he did imply that that well, they're they're all contained. They're down there, right? But we know I, I they're not. I didn't. We know I that know, two of the Inhumans that we saw when their uh, their little their diviners activated when 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 skies activated and they said hey you know you know they started making calls it's like well that's how they knew that you know a couple or at least one more had emerged yeah right i agree i agree with that but i don't think i don't think i didn't take colson saying that as that he said all the diviners were were flooded i think he meant how how i understood it was that he flooded the only area where you can use the diviner yeah that could that could be i mean you know i i I don't think there's enough information to to argue that point. I I think that'll that'll kind of work itself out. Uh like I say it could go either way. You know, maybe they believe that they're all down there, maybe like you said that the the access point is is done and flooded. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh but yeah, uh, you know, I did I thought it was very interesting that the way that they brought out Sky and they've been 
really kind of intimating that, you know, she's a, you know, talking about flowers that, uh, you know, she was the scourge and all of a sudden they start to realize, well, you know, sky's one too. And they're, you know, are all hurt and fighting each other. And, you know, the, the sky's still a member of the team, but she's been outed. You know, now everybody knows she's an inhuman and she still, she hasn't learned to control her power. Right. And, yeah, and that's just one of the things going on because we still have Mockingbird and Mac, uh, you know, within, uh, you know, almost on, you know, not on the level of Hydra, but we know that they're working to disassemble the team or. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's over everything else. Let's jump into that. All right. Okay. Well, I, they're not Hydra. Well, they're not Hydra. And, and the thing is, he didn't kill hunter if he had killed hunter then it would be very obvious they're the bad guys right but they're not yeah, the, and, they're, they're not and but, she dropped the line saying that maybe someday we can all be friends again right so you know i i uh i'm just really interested to see where this is going and i think i i, I think this started to crack it open tonight i think next week we're going to get some answers don't you yeah well i no, think they're, they're going to drag this out you yeah, think it's, it's, i don't know if they can i mean the fact that he choked him out i'm going Oh wait, maybe they're gonna flip this card because well they gotta kind of have to yeah unless they get that memory thing that the uh, if they still have that Cree memory uh, racer thing oh right they did scan it like they could build one but you know I think the best that they could do is keep Hunter locked up for one episode and Sky's already in the in the little protection chamber because she locked herself in there so yeah it's I think Rob's right I don't think there's many other variations. That you can do because they're not like in a base where, well, you know, I think he, you know, I think he went off to, you know, grab something at the Seven Eleven. Right. You know, they're on the bus. <laughs> you you can't hide the fact that you just choked him out. Yeah. What he, are you going to do with this guy? Right. right. He'd have done better just to, lie, you know, come up with at least a more semi convincing lie than the anger management group. It's a uh, right. You know, but yeah, now okay. he's choked. Now that he's choked him out, options are limited. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, this whole thing, like that whole thing, I just find so interesting the way they're playing it. And when he choked him out, I went, okay, it's got to flip open now. Uh, there's got to be, I mean, you know, what do we know about this so far? We know about the, uh, the toolbox. Right. We know they're not Hydra. There's no way they could all be friends again if they were on the bad guy team. Although, does the bad guy team know they're the bad guy team? Maybe not, you know. If it's the sword option and they feel like they're part of the global team, however, I think Mac is convinced by his lack of respect for Coulson that they can't control it, but they have a a friendly leader that can. Right. Now, they're not the leaders, but they have somebody driving a new bus, and obviously Col Coulson being, you know, kind of an alien hybrid anyway, obviously, as far as Mac's concerned... Uh, cannot and shouldn't be running that team because that cat has come out of the bag two or three or four times now. Right. Right. Okay. Here's, here's an interesting thought. Now this actually came from Charlie and he actually he, I think he actually might be onto this. He, it's funny because in this post, he, he wrote it to the group. He said that he, he liked our idea of sword. Okay. And I still think that we're going to lead to sword at some point here probably sooner rather than later, because as things splinter, I think that's a really tight way to build the universe. OK, uh, but he said he was thinking that Mockingbird and Mac are working for Maria Hill, because where's Maria Hill in all of this? Right. She's well, wait a minute. Yeah, but why would Maria Hill? We, we've we already established that her and Fury are on the same page with Winter Soldier. Why would she want to know where Fury's toolbox is? Hmm. Well, maybe like, she well, maybe she doesn't want to know well, where it is. She wants something from it. Char Charlie's point there is he goes, she knows what it is, but maybe she's upset that it wasn't given to her, that it was given to Coulson, especially since Coulson is this alien hybrid thing. Yeah, but she knows she knows what he was from the beginning. She knew this. Right. But and she knew working, why, because if she's cause... working with Stark and that I think is the, is what it's boiling down to for Charlie, if she is working with Stark and she is going to be behind all this, which is going to leave it into civil war. 
you know, with her, with, with Stark saying, hey, everybody needs to register and we need to, to you know, do this. Well, if Maria Hill is with him, which in the Civil War. Yeah, I was just about is, to say, yeah. She, then she Fury is. might be saying it's best to keep this toolbox away from her. Like he knows this is bubbling up and keeping with but, Coulson is a smarter way to go. But are we there yet? I mean, I guess you're. I mean, you're right. But, I mean, but maybe we, we are. don't have to. We don't have to be there yet, but we are there. I, I get it. This could. This could be under the surface. Uh, Avengers two. I mean, it, it. This may not even come into play very much. There might be just some allusions to what's going to happen, but we could take our time developing this story with Maria Hill and everything, and and find out that yeah, they're working with Maria Hill. This is what's going on. Which is why they have the privatized drones and they have the everything that leads to Ultron. I mean, it really could be the mistake. It's not just the mistake of Tony, but the mistake of Maria Hill that helps open the door for all that. Yeah, getting the toolbox and getting those drones and getting the Ultron program. Yeah, I, that that kind of makes sense. I, I yeah, well, I don't know. Now, now I'm at a loss. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's like a thousand variations. I I think they're. It's all good conjecture. I think it does. It, if they do some part of that storyline to tie into Ultron, it makes sense that if if they're tying into Sword, that it it is really starting here. Because what other group can you really think of within this universe other than Sword to say that they're part of the same team, but you know, really philosophically at odds, right? And sword just fits. And if it's well, through sword that Ultron kind of comes back, it's the perfect scapegoat for the movie. Right. I mean, unless they're working for the U.S. government, like one of those, you know, I mean, they they could. I mean, it could go to that. I mean, they, they do work for Talbot. I mean, not work for, but work with Talbot. And maybe they're the inside eyes to make sure that S.H.I.E.L.D. is not getting corrupt again. Yeah. Right. I just I mean, I mean, but you're right. You're right. I mean, I I, I want to be more comic booky, of course. So yeah, of course I want sword. But I mean, they they could go some kind of way with that because I just don't think they they're the help. militant type option. I mean, you could you could argue the case that Mac, you know, he's kind of you know philosophically, you know, he's kind of looking more for the great leader. I think, but I don't think that fits Mockingbird at all. I think you know they're they're both part of you know some network that they have deemed righteous and Coulson and his group uh, just not worthy or just, you know, they don't believe can handle it. It's, you know, it's, it's a really good setup for the next, next couple episodes, I think. And that's, yeah. that's what it boils down to. It's well, it's, it looked like from the preview that it all kind of like all hell's kind of breaking loose next week. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of like, we talked a, a little while about, a, about, you know, one of them being like, just a transition episode for um for um agent carter it's a and i think this one was kind of a a setup you know for like things to come but it was like so many different things it it just i think it made my head spin yeah well yeah i mean we get we get now that the somebody in the Cree. i mean i don't maybe he, this isn't the only person that saw it from the Cree. so we've got that potential we've got Asgard watching over this. I mean, she said she was sent down by Odin. She was technically sent down by Loki. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's just kind of like you know, you're just picking up the pieces here. It's just, it's just such a, I don't know, just such a bizarre way. Like they're they've opened up so much here that I don't know where they're gonna go with next. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's another that's another little side point. Is if Loki was truly sitting why would loki care whether or not a kree got to earth you know why wouldn't loki say you know this really isn't our problem right you know that you know do we well, suspend, i think, I think do loki, we suspend loki, disbelief or are we supposed to forget about that storyline for a little bit no i think loki is going to act the way odin acts i mean i don't think he's going to act loki you know like loki i mean because she did say that heimdall saw it so my guess is Heimdall saw it, went to Odin. Right. Odin's like, well, you know, Sif, go take care of it. Right. Right. Because, uh, you know, because you you wouldn't want Heimdall thinking something. So I mean, right. you, you don't want to you don't want to raise any red flags. And why would he? Why wouldn't he let this guy go and do this? I mean, why wouldn't he want Sif to to go and stop this guy or deal with this guy? 
it, it, what does it matter really? Whatever his plan is, I have a feeling his plan is not involving those, and he doesn't really care. He doesn't care if Earth just kills itself at this point. Right. Well, I guess that Hold was on. my that was my point, but I think Alil makes a solid point that you know if what you're planning is coming to fruition, you don't want to have little things like this make a sidetrack and go, well, why isn't Odin taking care of this problem? Because we know normally he would. Yeah. So. And 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 also, I mean, you know, she she wanted to take Sky and whoever back to to Asgard. You know what? Maybe this is a way also that Loki starts looking into here now that they know that the mist was out and there are these these other superhumans that are technically weapons. Maybe this is a way he looks to kind of build some kind of extra army. Yeah. Because, you know, Loki's story is not, not over, you know, and I still think he's going to have some involvement coming up here with the Infinity War and, you know, good or bad, you know. Yeah, right. You know, if, if if Thanos knows he's still alive, you know Thanos is going to oh, go after it, him. There's <laughs> no way Loki's not involved in Infinity War. I, I'm I'm hopeful that there's no Loki in Ultron unless it's some kind of little post credit thing. I think um, I think that was already rumored that it was right. Wasn't I know Heimdall they said was going to be. Yeah, he's supposed to be in like a post credit or something. Uh, I just hope that they don't do something more with Loki. I don't think they are, but you know, you never know. Well, you know, I think don't keep going back to that well every time, though. Well, and I think it's enough to kind of further the thought and conversation just to know that okay, wait a minute, Odin is Loki, and it just keeps it in thought. I don't think. I don't think they'll go there. They've got, they've unleashed a, you know, a myriad of things in this episode that we've got to go to. And, you know, it's just a nice little like, oh yeah, Odin's, yeah, Odin sent him. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, that's not Odin because we kind of know it's Loki. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I want to talk about the sky stuff. I, uh, I think this is once again interesting what they're doing. Um, I like how the team is reacting to it and kind of divided by it. And I think that what we saw Mac and Mockingbird in that scene in particular towards the end was the one that was probably the most telling how what stance they're taking. And that's why I was actually thinking it led to civil war. Yeah, I think you're right, because obviously uh, Simmons took it very badly that Fitz was keeping that from her. But, you know, he called her out and said, look, you're saying... Yeah, you did it too. Right. You're saying that, that, you know, this was an abomination. And she says, yeah, but not my friend. But yeah, your friend is one of them. You know, how is she supposed to feel? Which is ultimately what it comes down to in Civil War. Right. So you're going to have Fitz against Simmons. You're going to have Mockingbird and, uh, and, and Mac against the group. I think the, the one thing that could save Mac is if they decide to bring him in to their side and say, you know, this is what's going on. This is righteous. And they turn a hunter. Now, do you think that Colson is onto this? I've seen Colson a number of times be a step ahead. And we've been surprised as the audience when he had that little scene with Mac, I couldn't help but think, I wonder if he's onto it and he's moving the chess pieces already. He might be, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised because I, I would actually, I would actually be mad that he would get duped twice, you know, one one time each season by one of his own. Like I think they're gonna. Yeah, have it's, to play it, it seems it up weird, doesn't it? That yeah, I think they're gonna have to play it up that he knows what's going on and he knew he knows who who they're working for, but they're not a threat to Shield and they're you know and, and you know because you know he made that comment was it last week or the week before about you know how to how to you know how do you make Lola fly. Right. Meaning, meaning he, he already knew something was her. up. He, yeah, exactly. He knew there was something with that. Uh, so I, I'm curious with that. But you know what I was going to bring back to because we were talking about Civil War. What if they make Sky? I can't remember what the character was in the Civil War that kind of uh, exploded the school. The one that what causes if it, everything to go crazy. But that would mean yeah. they have to kill Sky, don't they? Well, Sky, we know Sky is Quake. So how right, does, I mean, how does that work in that storyline? Well, that it well she's in matter. Secret Avengers. I mean, she's she, that isn't that after Civil War? Uh, yes. So I mean, and again, they've again, take, it, they've it, taken it, liberties it, with characters. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it doesn't really doesn't have to. matter. It really doesn't matter who it is because it's not one of the you know Big Ten or whatever, and her right. character is definitely not. So if 
it, it could be that her character is the reason it goes nuts and boom yeah, uh, yeah she speedball. collapsed she, speedball and it might not was be, the guy it, it, yeah speedball it won't, it won't be a school i mean but you know maybe she collapses a building or something crazy. Yeah, marvel goes real dark in the movies killing kids uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you just see all these little uh you know children size captain america t-shirts and run oh, just burning <laughs> bloody oh <laughs> We've we've gone to a very dark place. Yes, we well, hey, Marvel did it. Not us. <laughs> yes. We're just full of love over here. That's my favorite restaurant, Alil's Dark Place. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you said restaurant because I almost <laughs> threw up. <laughs> oh we, no. We know where you're going. Uh, oh. Alil's Dark Place. <laughs> yeah. All right. And go there All for right. for, yeah. for a little foie. Food. Go to Alil's Dark Place for some foie gras and <laughs> Uh, I'm nervous of... about uh, Indiana Comic Con this weekend. If that's the, ah, the... <laughs> uh, are you getting some shameless plugs in there? Is that what you were trying to do? Mm. Always a little subtle plug there. <laughs> I'm always full of uh, shameless plugs. You, you said sh- shameless plug. Never okay, mind. I got it. Never mind. All right, let's, <laughs> I got let's, it. let's finish. Let's finish talking about the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was Speedball. Now they actually. You know, I actually wouldn't mind if they got to a point that we met Speedball on here, and that was our foreshadowing. We knew this is going to happen. And and leave Sky alone. Let Sky develop into Quake and, you know, not not be that character, but it, it, she causes the debate within the team. Yeah, oh, probably. I mean, I agree. I mean, I, I just think it would be kind of like a, a, a crazy twist. They're yeah, that it's her. Do, they're not going to no. do it. Yeah, but they would have they're to not. kill I mean, her, wouldn't they? Didn't Speedball die in that, or did he not? I don't. I don't. I don't remember. I don't think he did. But oh. I, I mean, I could be wrong. I thought they captured him, but I, I again, I could be wrong. Um, God, now I'm trying to remember. Uh, but but going back, you know, even if they don't, I mean, even you know, and they're talking about next week's previews. You know, they they talk about a lot of super villains. Yeah, they're talking about you know, yeah, no with kidding. Powers. So it already seems that they're trying to push her into the superhero role. You know that that this is Shield's now muscle because right. you know, she can she can do that because you know they're, they're going to have to eventually do it with this show because you know Shield is known to have you know super agents on their side. Well, yeah, that's kind of the point with with what happens as the story progresses, right? Yeah, I don't know, man. I I did I did think watching that uh, preview. And seeing all the supervillains, that guy with the uh, with no mouth that was uh, making people fall over from it. Who is that? That's Sonic or something? Doesn't he have a name like that? Do you know who I'm talking about? I I I don't recall what the character's name is. No, I, I know who you're talking about. That kind of like you. I don't know. Does he make everybody die? No, I think like, he just makes everybody like pass out or something. <laughs> I don't remember. It's like the, one, one of those waves that that's definitely like when I saw him, I recognized the character because he has that like weird burned mouth. And and uh, it's it's one of the characters. It's not. Oh, it's not it's Taskmaster. Mom? Who is it? No, Taskmaster just copies your moves. They need Taskmaster in this. Yeah, that's one of those characters that'll probably show up. <laughs> yeah, I can't think. You know what? It's it's late. I can't think. <laughs> I can't get it. <laughs> Whatever we talked about this episode. Uh, the uh, well, Sif. It was good to see Sif back. Yeah, but she didn't really do anything. I mean, as much as like no, she I, did, but she's still here, and I like that. Yeah, I agree. And I did like. I thought uh, she was more comic relief this week than anything else. Right, which is which is very different uh, for the character. And that line with uh, with Asia May when she's like in Thor, and oh, oh yeah. I know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and May's like, oh, oh yeah, I know why. <laughs> I, yeah, I feel like when I mention his name, I feel like smiling. Yeah. And Cole's just playing like an idiot. Like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You mean son of Cole? <laughs> yeah, his son of Cole. Son of what Cole. do you mean? I, I'm as hot as Thor. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I liked when Sky was fighting May, you know, doing a little training and, you know, learning control. And she's like, you know, don't hold back. Don't hold back. Well, I don't want to hurt you. And May's like, yeah, 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 yeah right. She made that face. <laughs> and we're we're thinking, yeah, you know. <laughs> She could just take you out, you know, and not even know it happened. Yeah. You know, that's like a yeah, total very- different thing. I think May's going to be the one that, you know, with the emotion control is going to be the one that kind of brings her back. But oh, I don't know. Yeah. It looked like it was going to be her, her ex-husband. 
Because he was the one talking with her in the uh, in the next episode in the in the teaser. Wait, whose ex husband? Maze was the one talking. Was the one talking to Sky? To Sky, yeah. Did I not see this? Did you not see the previews for next week? I did. I was so focused on the dude with the missing mouth and uh, oh. all the other stuff that was going. It, it's uh, I forgot the actor's name. He's been in a ton of things. Oh my god. Uh, I was also focused on it. Looks like we get some Kyle McLaughlin goodness in this next one. Oh yeah, he's uh It's going to cause trouble. <laughs> Isn't that what he does best? It it is. I'm excited for that. Well, so we've got let's I guess, you know, we've got Colson, we've got uh May, uh, uh we've got Sith, we've got the uh, the Simmons and Fitz and and uh let's see the Mac and and Mockingbird, what else did we, anything that... Yeah, what else did didn't we, we cover? Boy, it, there was just hmm. so much. It, it seems like, at this point, it, it seems like there oh, should be and, more. And it's Blair Underwood plays her ex-husband. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the one that gets called in as the psychologist with her. Mm. Yeah, so I'm wondering if he's the one who, who helps with uh, her controlling her powers. Oh, could be. Yeah, maybe that's why they bring him in, because... Mates, you know, really wasn't able to kind of bring her down when uh, Sith was trying to to get through the shield with the sword, and so they say, you know, hey, we need we need something a little more, and that's that's what takes us in the next week. Yeah, that's right. We still have, I mean, we still have Edward James almost appearing somewhere. I mean, I yep. thought he'd be here by now. Yeah, I mean, there's no way you take that character and use him once. You know, you don't use Edward James almost once. You use the guy if you can get him. Well, I don't. I don't want to tell you what his IMDb page for the show says. Oh no! Uh, is it one episode? <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually more. It's yeah. eleven. It's eleven. Eleven, 11 episodes. episodes. And so, we're at what episode fourteen? So he's got to be here next next week. Yeah, let's see here. That that would that puts him like the rest of this season plus next, right? It must. Yeah, if it's eleven episodes, we were on number twelve. It says well, and it just says twenty fifteen. So yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, maybe it bleeds over. Maybe it's you maybe know it six episodes this season, six next, or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Although they haven't announced that it's been picked back up. Well, Agent Carter got picked up. Yes, it did. Oh, that's, that's the right. other thing I wanted to bring up. Huge news: Agent Carter's coming back. I am super happy about that. That's yeah, going to be great. And I, I wonder, are they going to do, I mean, one thing that I keep thinking is they could take the, the thing we debated about all, all year about this Bradley Whitford thing. They could actually put that on just before the first episode, have us at that point, And then boom, the whole next season is all her developing shield with Howard and, and all that. I think that'd be awesome. So my question is, I guess you've seen the news is, are they going to go uh, put Agent Carter back in summer, or is is that going to be back to winter break again? Uh, it's sounding like it, that's that's the other thing too, because they said in the in the press release that ABC is doubling up again on Marvel. So I'm assuming that means they're picking Agents of Shield back up for a season three and doing the same thing with Agent Carter uh, over the winter break. Huh. Yeah, that'd be cool. I was almost kind of hoping that they would do a little, a little bit more during the summer. Uh, you know, just because it seems like these are the perfect fill-ins. You know, when they haven't been doing traditional shows, and that would be a perfect slot, so that you don't have these big giant breaks. You have these like little mini breaks in between where you get these like little short uh, epic, uh, little Marvel epics. Yeah. Well, I, well, I agree with that. The Netflix but then thing is Daredevil. Ha- the, the Netflix thing isn't happening during summer, so there is going to be a gap. Yeah. Well, there'll be a gap, but people can go back and like rewatch Daredevil. Age, uh, Age of Ultron will be out. I mean, I don't think they want to just jam pack and dilute even more. Yeah. True. Right. I yeah. I didn't. I, I didn't think the, about that. That game they'll play with. They would have so many things at once. Where you've got the summer, you've got these things happening. You come back and you get back on the on the same schedule with the with the shows yeah true i mean you could take a couple of months off and then you've got you know we're going to have jessica jones isn't that is that fall or is that pushed back i can't remember i thought it was december yeah i think it is i think it got pushed to december it was supposed to be in like september but it got pushed oh and we got ant-man this summer too oh yeah oh (laughs) we forgot that 
<laughs> so I mean, I mean, Marvel's got enough going on that they don't need a to yeah, put on and, a miniseries. And frankly, I really liked having Agent Carter in the middle of the season like that. Unless they wanted to launch another show, like they did, Agent Carter put an eight episode run in the middle of the season to see if it has legs. Uh, unless it, uh, they wanted to do that, I think they're smarter putting Agent Carter and let that be that mid-season thing. Let it be eight episodes a season and let it rock. ABC's The Punisher. No, I don't want that. I want that. <laughs> I know. That's, the what Punisher. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, where he's just shooting paintballs. Oh, that would be the worst. <laughs> and laser weapons. It all goes campy. All of our jokes about Spider-Man 66 actually happen. Oh. As long, as long as we get some writer credit, I'm fine. <laughs> Producer credit, whatever. Brought to you by <laughs> the Giga Geeks or whatever. It is, yeah, the uh, Giga Jackson. Geeks. I'm surprised there hasn't been some fanfic writer out there that hasn't written that and contacted us. You know, if, if somebody does that, if they write a good script, we'll actually perform it live. We'll perform it? <laughs> yeah, we'll perform it. You sound so incredulous. Listen to him. He's getting all nervous. I, live? I think I heard a we can't do stuff place. live. <laughs> because, you know, the extensive editing that we've done on this show. <laughs> yeah. That is true. <laughs> this is about as live as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on there's high production every time i listen to this show it's like oh yeah we're gonna get that off in the edit and then i hear you know i'm listening to the podcast and hear, yeah we're gonna get that in the edit <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah this isn't working <laughs> this is pretty much a live show as it is i mean yeah, you're getting you know it what? as we go it's, it's all comedy gold jack that's why we leave it all in <laughs> it's all it's all connected that's right all connected that reminds yeah. me when I was on the road and I found that cassette of Harmonica Gold. Is and I said oh, that. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> I remember when you bought that. We were touring with the jazz band then. Yeah, 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 yeah. So is is that related to Comedy Gold? <laughs> <laughs> well, we did laugh a lot when we listened to it. Oh my god, that was funny. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I'm so lost. <laughs> Well, yeah, you, a couple you, of band geeks talking it out. That's all it is. That's right. Just a couple of fellers helping each other out, you know, down the mountain. Oh, no. Hey, <laughs> what are you doing up in a little dark place? <laughs> hey, oh. Follow me. I... <laughs> Table for three, a little dark place. Oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, a, there's an up room. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find that out, out in Indiana, won't we? Well, we started downhill oh. and we ended downhill, so I'm calling this a success. <laughs> it might be the best uh, we've ever done so all right let's get some some business out of the way then since it sounds like we're done uh so we are going to be in indiana for the indianapolis comic-con this weekend which uh i don't even know the dates march something 14 15 16th but we'll yeah. be there on the 15 16th yeah the 15th we're doing oh, no. fantastic cage match no, 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 I'm, no i'm sorry 14th well, it's 13 14th because it's friday the 13th this week oh okay 13th, so the 14th, 14th. 15th. yeah we'll be there we're gonna be 14th. doing geek tastic cage match at night and then on the 15th we do podcasting and journalism and geek my kid on sunday so if you're at indianapolis comic-con please come by introduce yourself say hi uh you, you can maybe uh see a little dark place if you want Sure, and, I, and if you want to see it, I'll give you some swag. <laughs> you said swag, right? Of course. So, uh, so what is wrong with this show tonight? I don't. <laughs> seems like it's been way every... past your bedtime. <laughs> it, you know, it seems like it has gotten worse. Something is wrong. Uh, so... We usually have like a day to recover, like after the uh, after the show, and I I think we're just we're still high on uh, on Marvel Agents of Shield. I think that's what I... it is think that's what it is look what it does to us I, i'm like quake i'm starting to shake over the whole thing or i'm become i'm the puddle that's my my new superhero i, I think the definition Ugh. of that is shimmy but <laughs> so nice nice <laughs> all right uh you can find past episodes of this and super connectivity and the new marvel roundup on our website which is www.southgatemediagroup.com you can follow the show on twitter at nuff said pod you can find it might be enough said podcast i don't know uh you can find me at our southgate and the company at smg pods and we also have a patreon page so if you like the show and you want to contribute it really helps helps keep us going uh just go to patreon go to our website and you can click on the Patreon logo and take care of it that way. And that would be greatly appreciated. And Alil, what else do you do? Where do you tweet from? 
Uh, I tweet from at L-O-G-E-E-K-Z, and that is for the League of Geeks podcast, and that's Geeks with a Z. Very good. And uh, you had a good guest this week. I haven't heard it yet, but you had Arnie from Now Playing On. How did that go? Yeah, yes, we did. No, it, it went great. Uh, we, we He's we, a great geek- guy. Oh, he is. Uh, we geeked out about collecting Star Wars, Marvel, uh, and also about uh, the Kickstarter that he's doing for Now Playing. Nice. So, so uh, uh, are they having cool. success with that? Uh, they are. They've actually um, are going to uh, they they hit their one goal, but they're going to try to hit their stretch goals. So if anybody out there listens to Now Playing, or if they're not, check out Now Playing. It's a it's a great show. It's a great show, and if you're interested, definitely support that Kickstarter. It's a really good one. Uh, I know that we've been very supportive of them, and Arnie's just been a great guy with us. So uh, very cool. I'm, I I think that's a show on League of Geeks that you definitely want to listen to. And Jack, what do you do? What do I? What is that that I do do? <laughs> that you do so well. That what I do so what well. doesn't Jack do? Let's see. I'm at J Wengroski on Twitter, and I'm at the new Bosch podcast and the older and very much more established Blacklist podcast, both with Melissa Maxey. And I also do the new uh, Trumpet Talk podcast and also has an accompanying blog. Yes. And uh, speaking of blogs, Alil, when are you debuting your blog piece for us? Um, when I, when I'm not traveling so much, um, I, I think you need to set your priorities there. Oh, well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think I'm calling <laughs> Jenny. Uh, a little is quitting because, uh, yeah. he's decided to devote job. himself to enough said. <laughs> yeah. No, that's commitment. That's what I'm saying. To which she'll say, yeah, enough said. <laughs> exactly. And then I get stabbed in the face. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, wait, that's going to happen in Indiana. Come on down. Stab a little in the face. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Live, at the, like, no it's not... Live at the Blue Box. Yeah. How about so, a pie uh, in the face? Oh, yeah, man? you can also do that. Come see us at the Blue Box. Uh, this will be up in time. If you're in the Chicagoland area, you want to come. We're going to be playing there uh, Thursday night. Playing like I'm a musician again. Uh, we're going to be at the Blue Box doing live podcast Thursday night. And other than that, we're typically there almost every Saturday night uh, doing live shows. And it is a blast. And typically, Alil is there, although uh, not every time. I unfortunately have to be there every time. So if you can't stand me, don't come. Uh, is that it? <laughs> That's Did it. We hit is everything? That, wait, is that why it's always empty? No, I'm sure. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> always empty. <laughs> no, Blue Box is awesome. Come out to it. Uh, I was going to officially you, announce we have new co-hosts. <laughs> even if you don't like uh, Rob. Uh, they have great, uh, they have great food. So great just food. Go great check coffee. out for the food. Yeah. Well, and, uh, oh, and here's, here's the last thing. Chris, the owner of the blue box is going to be with us in Indianapolis. Yes, he is. Yeah. So, uh, pretty interesting. You want to meet him. You got a chance to meet him too. It's going to, we have like, I don't know, like seven of us or more that are going to be in Indianapolis at that con. It's going to be crazy. So poor, not, but not Jack. No, no, poor Jack. I'll be poor stuck Jack. here in in the confines of Miami, Florida, breezing away in Florida. I know his white his it, white linen pants. I know it got all the way down to seventy seven degrees today, and you know I, I <laughs> busted my jacket out in my UGG boots. <laughs> why do I think you actually have UGG boots? Uh, why would you think that? <laughs> I think we've all been up too late. Ah. Uh. Yeah, it's bedtime. All right, I will. Uh, I'm going to close it out. Thank you for listening, everybody. Do you guys have anything else you want to say, or can I close it? Close it close up. Close it down. That's it. We'll talk to you guys next week. Enough said. Enough said. Enough said. Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs>